That's it. That is the last straw. This stuff in the air has crumbled my front steps. Stained my house. Corroded my chrome. Oh, it's even given my dog smoker's cough. And look at this. Oh, who ever heard of a speckled daisy? Hey, you over there, stop it. I said stop it. Turn off that... <coughs> well, I don't have to put up with this sort of thing. I'll just march myself over there and... smoke from your factory. It's destroying my home, my, my health, my... Well, we, too, are concerned about that pressing problem. Here, let me show you some of our ads on air pollution. They prove how clean we... Oh, come on. Just look out the window. Oh, please. Now, we are a very community-minded firm and greatly concerned with air pollution. Why, we've spent millions on just this ad campaign alone, dramatizing pollution and Mind you, that includes those dangerous gases you can't even see. But the smoke coming from your... We're spending vast sums on the development of anti-pollution devices that will, uh, uh... But let me show you some ads. Yeah, but right now, the... Well, many of these things are still in the development stage, and, uh... All right, but why don't you... If it were just my decision, well... But we must consider the stockholders. Millions of little people depend on us to protect their interests. Now, you take another look at our ads, and I think you'll see that we're doing all that's possible to make the air we're using cleaner when we're finished than when we started. And then, if you're still not satisfied, I think you ought to look into who I consider the real culprit in this air pollution thing. The electric power company. The one who's pouring out the invisible sulfur dioxide that gets you where you breathe. <laughs> Please, you're getting soot on my jacket. That soot's from your big smokestack. Yes, and that's the reason we build it so big, to carry the soot away. There's really no reason, my dear fellow, for you to bring any of it back. If we had any use for it, you could be sure we wouldn't be giving it away. That's what I want to talk to you about. The soot's falling on my house. It's making my throat burn. And who knows what the invisible junk is doing to me. I, I can't breathe. Please control yourself. Now, it is possible, just, just possible, mind you, that every now and then a little teensy-weensy bit of smoke might get into the air. But we are a public utility. And the public, which we faithfully serve, is interested in power, not pollution. However, as a public service regulated by the Public Service Commission, we recognize our responsibilities, and we are taking great pains. Always keeping in mind economic realities, of course, to send forth air as clean as our electricity. Now, I don't want to tell tales out of school, but uh, everyone knows the real cause of air pollution. It's those terrible little men, the public incinerator. <laughs> Excuse me. Who do 
I talk to about all that smoke and soot coming from your incinerator? And not me. Talk to the plant engineer. Talk to the division superintendent. Call the Smoke Pollution Control Board. Well, what'll they do? They'll call the Department of Sanitation. Who will notify the... Yes, but who'll do something? Don't look at me. I just plain garbage. Now look, Mac. You can't just do something. There's some regulations, priorities, channels, procedures, budgets, responsibilities. Anyway, we don't put out all that much smoke. It's all them little incinerators and all them apartment houses that's messing up the air. Why don't you go talk to them? <coughs> Is this your building? No, I'm the inspector from the Department of Buildings. Just the man I want to see. What can be done about the air pollution from these apartment house incinerators? Well, it's not so much the new buildings as the old ones. And there's not much that can be done about them. Oh, you want to be careful not to breathe any of that stuff in. It's asbestos insulation, lung disease, and all that sort of thing. Lung disease? This stuff can cause lung disease, and you just let it float around? Well, except for windy days or when they're working on the upper floors. The asbestos only contaminates a few dozen blocks around the construction site. The thing you want to worry about is the stuff you can't see, like peroxyacetyl nitrate, hydrogen sulfide, mercaptans, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. To say nothing of carcinogenic benzpyrin. Now, if you really want to get down to bedrock, take the buses. Why, they're all over, filling the city with filthy fuel. Now that's a violation of the building code. Take me to your leader. Well, they do smell vile, but don't they look lovely? Now that we've got all that pretty advertising on the outside? <laughs> hey, if you're concerned with air pollution, Go talk to the car manufacturers. Beautiful, just beautiful. An American symbol of power, speed, manhood, status, and conspicuous consumption. <laughs> bumper to bumper, as far as the eye can see. Which isn't very far with all that haze. Another blessing of the American automobile. Hides all those ugly junkyards and hideous roadside stands and signs. Yes, but it's also burning my eyes, wilting my wisteria, and poisoning my parakeet. Now, just a minute there, son. Are you accusing my beautiful little baby of... of... bad breath? What's the matter with you, anyway? Everybody loves the automobile. It's as American as frozen apple pie. Are you some kind of nut? A predestrian? Uh, no, no, I, I drive a car. I uh, ju just, just want to be able to breathe. Oh, I get it. One of them nature lovers. A conservationist. Well, let me tell you something. The pollution isn't our beautiful baby's fault. It's your precious son that changes the exhaust into poison gas. But listen, boy, if you are so big on your crusade, I'll tell you where all the filth in the air is really coming from. What? That's where I started. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Every one of these people fouling the air and passing the buck. Somebody's got to do something. And you, Fenwick Hack, are going to do something. Tonight, you're going to... Uh, 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 uh no, not, not, not tonight. Uh, tonight's bowling. See. Tomorrow, Fenwick Hack, at the hearing on proposed air quality standards for this region, you're going to stand up and demand no leaf burning, 
No backyard incinerators. Uh, well, uh, I've got this uh, little backyard incinerator and... Yes. <clears throat> well, the uh, day after, you're going to sit down and write your legislator and uh, say... No, no, I, I see, I'm really not much of a letter writer. You got the wrong guy there. In fact, well, <clears throat> on election day, you're going to vote for the proposal to... Well, I don't know. I, I've been reading in the papers where that sort of thing is liable to raise taxes. Well, heaven knows. I'm doing enough to fight air pollution now. Close the door! You're letting in all that filthy air! Poor hack. Frustrated, bewildered, cinders in his eyes, soot in his hair, and a concoction of noxious pollutants in his lungs. But like so many of us, he is too occupied, too busy, to really do something, to participate, to take action. This is the barrier to a healthier environment. I'm Senator Muskie, and I share with you a citizen's portion of air pollution and a deep concern for the problem. The scientific solutions to the problems of air pollution are available to us. There are formulas, plans, technical knowledge, medical information, and engineering skill. We have them all ready at work to help reduce the problems. Others are waiting trial and proof. But of all the ingredients necessary to lick the problem, Public involvement and committal are the most vital elements. Without your active participation in the fight, there is no fight. Just surrender, not only to air pollution, but to many of the other problems facing society. And also at stake is the heritage of every American, the right, the responsibility to participate in government. Citizens' action is essential in a democratic society. When a Mr. Hack or a million Mr. Hacks ignore their rights and obligations as citizens, the job falls on the shoulders of an overworked bureaucracy. Air pollution is not to be controlled by somebody else. It is your problem and mine, and we must act together as individuals in our community. We must join with local, state, and national legislators to determine the facts of dirty air. We must establish standards for clean air that will protect our health. Hack's adventures in his search for the responsible sources are not all fantasies. As our industries move ahead to meet the demands of progress and production, as our society consumes more fuel, uses more gasoline, for transportation, injects more chemical compounds into the atmosphere, more particulates and sulfur oxides. There is more need to be aware and alarmed. We realize that a few responsible industries have taken steps to reduce their contribution to the total pollution problem and are seeking to apply modern abatement techniques to their operations. We know there are examples of cities that have acted to deal with the problem and have made some progress. And we also know, with sad discomfort, that too many communities are indifferent about the problem. Our eyes, throats, and lungs attest to the pollution invasion. It would be sad to think that we can only be motivated by disaster by a repetition of a Donora incident where noxious pollution poured into the atmosphere, brought the tragedy of illness and death to that town. And more recently, there was a dangerous pollution inversion that wrapped New York City in disastrous smog. That brings us back to Mr. Hack and to ourselves. It is truly up to us to act. And there are ways and means to take firm action. The Air Quality Act of 1967, which I sponsored, establishes a framework for dealing with air pollution on a community-by-community -community basis. The federal government 
is establishing air quality regions, geographical and political areas which share the same air pollution problem. There is a way, but the way lies with you and your fellow citizens. It is you who must become familiar with local problems. You must get to know and work with key people in the official air pollution agencies, local, regional, and state in order to be more effective. You and your fellow citizens must awaken public interest. You must work through community groups and interested organizations, such as your Tuberculosis and Respiratory Disease Association, which are fighting the battle for clean air. You must be prepared to make recommendations for the various technical advisory committees and participate in the hearings called for under the law. Once you've made your neighborhood and community surveys, like Mr. Hack, you must be prepared to testify at public hearings and to be watchdogs in the public interest. Clean air is not wishful thinking. Please remember, it is a challenge to each of us. We can have clean air if we are willing to work for it. And we must act now, for it is literally a matter of life and breath.